on your marks. Get set. Bang. Hello there. what you think it is isn't it it's crypto today it's a great british bank off podcast and boy am i excited to be back y'all uh, <laughs> it's it's a good time to be be to be uh watching this program if you if you get down with the get down and uh we are uh, joined of course by uh one nick Jew. uh f john fisher uh, fair enough <laughs> <laughs> We're down. We're down an ant because ant made a whole new human, and so he's going to be out maybe the entire series. If he says he wants to come in, with no worries, right that. But at least for this week, and maybe for a couple more episodes, who knows? We're joined by Brad. Yes, y'all remember Brad? Brad was on the Great American Baking Show, and uh, good folk, a good guy to have around. He's from Ohio, just like I am. So it's it's lovely to have him join us, man. Brad, how the heck are you? I'm doing great. Nice to see you. Excellent. You as well, good sir. Uh, we people. Again, I'm very excited to talk about this show. I love Bake Off. Truly, it's like it's like it's definitely like one of those things. I'm like, when I saw the email, the the, the message go up that, that it was coming back, I immediately hit Nick up. Like, we back. Yes, it's just perfectly timed. It's like fall has begun. Go. Yes, I'm picking up my Gilmore Girls watch. Bake Off is back. <laughs> we are in here, and I'm so excited to have Brad here. I didn't get to talk to him when you all interviewed him last season for the Great American Baking Show, so I'm super excited. I was trying to not be too chatty in the upfront because I wanted to save it all for the for the thing, but I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, well, thank you. <clears throat> Let us begin with, of course, that Barbie opening. Oh my God, <laughs> it was so good. It was so fun. <laughs> I I I love those two together, and I, it's not that I have not loved uh, other other hosts that have come together, but those two have an energy that makes it this just a little bit more special to me. And and so Allison and Noel being just goofy, Paul coming along in that that cowboy outfit, and then Prue doing her American accent as the weird Barbie. It was everything. Ah, goodness gracious, I love it, Paul. <laughs> Oh, that cowboy hookup was very just like, sir. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not Barbie, <laughs> she comes along. He likes weird Barbie. It was, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it was just a whole lot of fun, and I really, really enjoyed that. So that, of course, is our first uh, first intro of the of the season, and uh, of course, we'll talk about them every week. But uh, every week, we you know we normally have a little baking news segment. We talk about some stuff, but this week we're going to in- introduce you to all the bakers. So means I gotta play my theme music, and that is, of course, means I also have to, have to you know, kind of find my theme music, which is this one right here. <laughs> Bakers make the world go round. I'm telling you already, if you watch the show, it's just gonna be that much better for you. Okay, going forward, you can. Oh, I guess I should say that because this is the first time we're doing KP like this. Uh, we do it live now. You can actually watch us record this every week as long as everybody is okay with that. <laughs> and uh, also means that this will be available later for you to view on uh, YouTube. Uh, the, the live version will be right there. It'll just be under live shows. But I actually will go back through and clean up anything I have to. Normally, this is not a, a edit-heavy show, but just in case. But uh, you want to be watching it. I'm telling you right now. I've done I've done some work over these last few days to get this all up and running. And I'm... I'm a, Proud of myself and pat myself on the back here. Bakers make the world go round. A factual statement if, if ever there were one. I'm going to introduce you guys to all of the bakers, meaning there's a dozen bakers, all of them with ages and where they're from, and so on and so on. It's a lot. Take it in now, absorb it now, and now you'll know the bakers. Okay. <laughs> Alphabetical order. Start with Andy, 44. He's a car mechanic from Essex, isn't it? Uh, 
this is what the, all these are from the official channel for uh, a write up. So, family lies not only at the center of Andy's world, but also of his baking. As a child, baking alongside his mom, Andy first learned the much loved family staples apple crumble to follow a Sunday roast and bakewell tarts made using pastry offcuts. Offcuts is a good word to make sure nothing went to waste. Among them, now he bakes for his partner, Nikki, and hopes to inspire his daughter, Maisie, to follow in his baking footsteps, always with the aim of making his adored mom proud. When he's not in the kitchen, Andy is incredibly active. He plays football, goes to the gym, loves a long walk with Nikki, Maisie, and their miniature schnauzer, Arthur. Oh, that's a delight. <laughs> Next up is Christian. Christian, I owe him an extra A in his name because I didn't type it there, but I'm going to do it right now. Christian, 33, is a menswear designer from London. Born in Emmen, a small town in the Netherlands. Emmen is spelled E-M-M-E-M-M-E-N. If I mispronounce that, please forgive me. Uh, in the Netherlands, close to the border with Germany, Christian studied fashion in Amsterdam and moved to the UK seven years ago, arriving in London to work for a leading fashion brand. Ooh, that means he worked for somebody big, and I wonder who that could be. Worked for, at least. He is passionate about visiting modern art galleries and stately homes. There's more, but don't worry. Am I going to put these in your show notes? Maybe. Uh, <laughs> again, these are real long. I can't read them all. Uh, Dylan, 20. I didn't realize that boy was that young. Wow, he's just a baby. Retail from Buckinghamshire. English names are the best, y'all. Buckinghamshire. That that's a long word. I wrote in my notes that that is the name of like if I'm trying to be cheeky and make up the name of an English town, I would say something like Buckinghamshire. <laughs> and that is an actual place. Curiosity for culture runs through Dylan's veins, and he loves to travel. He recently took a gap year of traveling through Southeast Asia, exploring the food and meeting new people at every stop. He's an avid skateboarder and has a fascination for the way that 90s PC and vintage cars were built. With an influence from his artistic mom, he has always loved to paint and will paint Japanese-inspired characters and cartoons on his T-shirts. Super proud of his fusion roots. His mother is Indian, his father Japanese-Belgian. Dylan loves to experiment with sweet and spice in his baking. His, his presentation style is influenced by the beautiful Japanese bakes he tried on his travels and through the following of the French patissier chefs, uh, chefs on social media. Very cool. Georgie, 34, a pediatric nurse from, is another one of those ones, okay? Watch for this one. Carmarthenshire. Carmarthenshire, okay? <laughs> Georgie's love of food, particularly of baking, firmly embedded her in, uh, in her Italian roots. It was fun to hear someone with an Italian-English accent. It was it's, it's so very present that I was like, like you know, we had, we had Giuseppe before, but Giuseppe, I don't know, his accent was more Italian. But this woman is a British Italian accent. It was so fun to kind of hear her uh, firmly better in her Italian roots. And in the day, in the day she, she spent cooking with her Nona Rosa. George is a nature loving forager. Oh, she's a forager. We got another forager this year, y'all, who takes inspiration from food growing in the fields and hedgerows uh, around her, as well as the, the abundance in her garden. And the discovery she's made on her travels. A self-proclaimed cannoli connoisseur. Dig it. Brad, you make you make cannoli, right? Or you have made cannoli? Have I seen yeah, cannoli Chris, is, Chris was a cannoli person. Oh, man, I thought, I thought I've eaten seen. cannolis. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair. Uh, Gil, 53, a senior category, which uh, a senior category manager, which once I've had explained to me means she's a marketing manager from Lancashire. No, it's not Gil, it's Jill. It's just pronounced weird. Spelled with a G, pronounced with a, pronounced like a J. You mean like yes. GIF? The I, I, pronunciation of GIF? You mean I, like I, that? I will, <laughs> I will see you in the streets for that kind of nonsense. Number. Uh, Jill is convinced that her love of precision data and her inherent creativity are the perfect match for successful baking. She can't remember a time when she didn't bake. Growing up, baking was very much a family activity since her father passed away in 2015. Jill has used baking as a source for comfort and put her skills to good use, raising money for Alzheimer's charities in his memory. Pies, cakes, and pastries, including her dad's signature lemon meringue pie, were staples of her childhood. So her baking is very much traditional in style and with a modern twist. Her sticky toffee Christmas pudding has been a hit at family celebrations for the past five years. Jill's claim to fame? In 1993, she was the UK's youngest ever driving instructor at age 21. That's kind of cool. Hazel, this is a fun lady. 
I'm having a good time with Hazel. I hope she stays for a few weeks. Hazel, 71, a retired nail tick from Kent. I have watched a lot of TV in my day, and I know a Kent accent when I hear it at this point, and I'm like, yes, yeah, she is. <laughs> it's a very specific kind of sound from, from people from Kent, and I dig it. Uh, married to her childhood sweetheart for 51 years, Hazel has four children, one of whom still lives with home, while the other three and her 10 grandchildren all live close by. She loves nothing more than to gather everyone together for dinners and parties, and especially loves the get-togethers at Christmas. As Hazel, as uh, ask Hazel to make your, you a birthday cake, and it may well come with working parts. She has made several car cakes with remote control wheels and working lights. Her granddaughter's seventh birthday cake was a carousel with 500 edible diamonds that look that took Hazel two weeks to make. When she's not baking or entertaining, her family Hazel will be exercising her competitive streak playing bingo. Ilian, 31, a, a birth trauma uh, specialist midwife from Norfolk. And uh, Norfolk, Norfolk in England. Is the stream chat disabled? It shouldn't be. Oh, no, no. The way that works is that's people who can come in and talk to us. Oh, I see. Which Our chat mean. is betwixt us. That chat is if people are watching. Well, there's two. Us. One says stream and one says private. And yeah, the in the one that says stream, it says sending messages is only supported for hosts. Enjoy yep. the stream. That's me. I can talk back to people. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> see, Sorry. I wanted to go over all this and I forgot to go over all this. My apologies. No worries. Again, we're, we're using new stuff. People were learning. Uh, Ilian's birth, birth trauma specialist midwife from Norfolk. She's born in London as one of eight siblings. She grew up in Norfolk in a busy household, which she helped her mom to bake, soon becoming the go-to family member for birthday cakes. Living in a cute community of myriad cultures and nationalities, Ilian is inspired by the great, the, by the ingredients and flavors of many, of many different cuisines. For example, she loves Middle Eastern ingredients, such as dried fruits, nuts, honey, rose, and mint. In her cakes, while her savory bakes are typically inspired by the flavors of the Caribbean, a qualified midwife and published author, say, go on, girl. Ilian now freelances to help women as they, they embark on their parenthood journey. Love it. Uh, she lives with her sister and nieces and her Spanish husband and their two young children. Why do we call her Spanish husband, uh, Channel 4? That's a... Uh... Because <laughs> he's from Spain. I get that, but... <laughs> Everybody else had a country of origin note in their bio. For them, not they people. Maybe she wanted it to be known. Fair, fair. Maybe she, she had a husband who wasn't Spanish. Before this, <laughs> right. <laughs> I was gonna ask, see, see Brad, Brad's, Brad's, Brad's our Brad's our expert on these matters. Did y'all have to write your own bios or did they what what happened with your We we wrote our bios and sent in and they edited them and um some of them they mixed up a bit, but um, they were pretty good. But it it was from from the bakers. So okay, so you know maybe she wanted y'all to, us to know that her husband is Spanish. So I will allow for it. I'm sorry, Ilian. I didn't mean to take any way, <laughs> take anything away from you. Uh, up next, Jeff. Jeff also makes me happy. I, I, I'm excited for this guy. 67, retired university lecturer lecturer from West Yorkshire, but originally from where? The Bronx. The, the Bronx. We've got an American in the <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yes. Who, who, of course, because he's been in England since 79, has this hybrid accent again. And I love hearing it. I was like, all right, Jeff, I dig it's that. It's very like 1940s movie star Mid-Atlantic. Yes. That's exactly yeah. what that accent is. That's fun. Uh, when he immigrated with his English girlfriend, now wife, whom he met while she was hitching her way across America, that's some real 70s discussion right there. <laughs> <laughs> and he was a sports coach for a summer camp. They have lived in Yorkshire since 1987. A keen and competitive sportsman, Jeff has now hung up his basketball boots. Basketball boots. Oh, the English. <laughs> but still loves swimming, going to the gym, and long countryside walks. He began baking in earnest when, he, when his children were little, having learned the basics from his grandmother and Hungarian great-grandmother when he himself was a child. As you may hope, as you might hope, and perhaps even expect, he makes a mean New York cheesecake. Love that. That's it. Uh, John, 37, directorate sports manager for the NHS from West Midlands. Is it there's a place that's just called West Midlands, not the West Midlands, not whatever they call this is like I said directly from them. So when it just says West Midlands, I'm like, that's crazy. 
born and bred in West Midlands, John has been a hairdresser and an estate agent, but he found his calling working in the NHS, keeping schedules and theater bookings running like clockwork. He, his job keeps him busy. So after y'all heard me just say theater and I, and I want you to know NHS is the national health services, meaning the how basically how English people go to the doctor, meaning the theater they're talking about here is the surgical theater. <laughs> Not oh. the theater. theater. Okay. <laughs> Which I think had to, it's something I should have like, wait a minute, NHS theater. I'm like, wait a minute. That means he's worked in this is the surgical theater. Yes, that's that's what he's doing. And when, when I say the theater in this in this case. Uh let's see. Uh, also, I don't want no hate mail, but I think you're supposed to say Yorkshire. Oh, you I'll take the hate mail. <laughs> 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 I am an American. I will pronounce it like American does. <laughs> I'll do my best to give you what I know. Okay. Y'all heard y'all had to walk through the other one, that long one, that carbon like, carbon like like Yeah, chair. so you gotta give me what I got at this point. Uh his favorite pastime is relaxed at home with his cavapoo, which I assume is some sort of dog named Stanley. Cavapoo? So what is that? What kind of it's dog would that be? It's, it's a cavalier a King Charles Cavalier oh, and a poodle. And a poodle. Wow, my sister has a King Charles. Uh, uh, and what is that dog's name? I should know my 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 dog niece's uh, nephew's name, but I do not. You really right should. I, I, <laughs> That's a shame, Uncle T. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, over weekends, you can find John and Stanley hitting the courtside for long walks. John learned how to bake with his nan, making fairy cakes and pies, and now bakes it to honor his nan's memory and pass on the skills she taught him to his two young nephews. He loves classic bakes with a twist using herbs and, or I should do it like they do, herbs, herbs. and other flavorings. I want you, I, I do want y'all to know, if, for those who might be offended by my pronunciation, everything got spell in this bad boy, top to bottom. If it's got the U in it, it's got the U in it. I spell it right. I spell it just like the, that's like the Brits do because I want to put some respect on it. You know what I'm And you even will substitute the British name for something. That's the only reason why I mentioned Yorkshire, because I don't want the people to come for you, because you do such excellent work. I try. I try. Uh, his favorite bake, though, is a classic lemon tart. That actually is one of Anthony's favorite bakes as well. That's funny. Uh, Mike, 29, a farm manager from Wiltshire. They showed this then on videos, y'all, just, just riding the track, and I'm like, yeah, that's that's a thing. That makes perfect sense. They have to feed the the, the English. They have to have farms. <laughs> I just never think of England and farms because I just basically I just think of London, London, and oddly enough, uh, when I think of the UK, I think of a uh, 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 Scotland. So, and, and nothing else. I got to tell you, I'm never I'm never really concerned of Wales and or uh, Northern Ireland. I just hey, <laughs> it's those two spots that are, that have my my mind. So, shortlisted. That's a cool. This is very cool. Shortlisted for Young Farmer of the Year in 2024, National uh, Arabelle and Grassland Awards, and considered a friend to all. Nice. Mike is a fourth generation farmer working on his family farm alongside his parents and sister. He's an advocate for the LGBTQ plus community with within farming, and has and, and was an ambassador for the National Farmers Union in 2022. Amazingly, Mike is growing all the flowers for his upcoming wedding to partner uh, Matt. Mike's baking style is homely and wholesome. He, he, he likes making big, hearty bakes using high-quality local ingredients uh, that can satisfy lots of people at parties and gatherings. He especially loves using seasonal fruits and edible flowers from his garden and farm and, e and is even making his own wedding cake. Now, Brad, mm -hmm. made, you made your daughter's wedding cake? Yes. Yes. And Brad said to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't imagine this man making his own wedding cake. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a lot to do going on around weddings. <laughs> it's actually my daughter's second anniversary today. So Congrats. two years ago, I was putting the cake together and stressing out. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to her and the mister on their on their, on their second year of, of wedded bliss. Uh Nellie's up next. Nellie, 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 Nellie. Nellie is going to be a lot of fun. I can. I tell. love her so much. I love yes. Mike a, a ton too. I love like so many of these bakers. But instantly, like when the show was over, I'm like Mike and Nellie and Hazel. Give me all of that. Yep, yep. Uh, pal a palliative care assistant from Dorset, alongside her busy job in nighttime palliative care, which basically means she takes care of people who are in pain. So that's dope. Mm. 
Uh, Nellie is a devoted mom of two young boys with her husband, Chand. No disrespect, Nellie. That's just a wild name to your boy. Are the biggest fans of her base. Nellie grew up with her dad in Slovakia, then moved to Austria to study nursing. Her dad loved to bake bread, but wasn't keen on sweet baking. So it was only as an adult, after she had attempted a neighbor's gingerbread recipe, that Nellie extended her skills. Completely self-taught, Nellie loves adding the flavors of Slovakian cuisine to her bakes, as well as spices representing her husband's Pakistani heritage. Apple and cinnamon are among her favorite ingredients. Nellie indulges her creative talents making jewelry and is a big fan of true crime. This is why I like Nellie. It's a vibe that Nellie has, and I'm like, yeah, you get down to get down. Her son, <laughs> when her husband pointed that crab at her, he's like, mm. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I can already tell what kind of... <laughs> That's a good lady you got. That's a good mom there. And our our last one, last up is Sumaya, nineteen. She's a dentistry student from Lancashire. So we got double loving. Word up the Lancashire is a community. We got double representation this go around. Presently on her gap year, Sumaya is indulging her sweet tooth before on, going on to study dentistry. She lives in Lancashire with her parents and, her, and siblings, and not only aced her sciences, but is incredibly creative too. She's a keen sewer, making her own clothes, and has recently taken up photography. An entirely self-taught baker, Samaya meticulously, meticulously researches her creations, combining myriad techniques and recipes to create eclectic and imaginative fusions of cultures and flavors. The projects that confirmed her love for baking was a macaron tower she made for her aunt's um, uh, Mendy wedding celebration. Mendy, Med Mendy. M-E-H-N-D-I, people, if I, I'm sorry, I can't get that one down. Wedding celebration. The results stood one meter tall, including 240 macarons in four different flavors and a cascade of flowers. Big up. That is crazy. That is your bakers. That is your bakers make the world go round. It's, sorry, y'all. It, it was. I told you I was going to be long, but I never have to introduce them all that, that in-depth ever again. <laughs> now you have a fair understanding of, uh, of who is who. I pass it over to Nick to introduce our uh, first segment. Yeah, so our first segment is the signature challenge. The bakers are tasked with making an elevated loaf cake, and the joke was not a loaf cake put on a high surface. <laughs> and they have two hours to complete. <laughs> So, of course, I was like, immediately, I was like, wait a minute. Somebody else had to bake a loaf cake in, in, during cake week. <laughs> and then, of course, as we go into the, the, the everything about this episode, I was like, OK, so we just we just was like, we're not going to deja vu. We're not going to rewrite anything. <laughs> as a man who has baked a loaf cake yourself, were you I mean, were you like excited to see this or you were like. Is this crazy? Are you? How did you take this? <laughs> um, a bit of PTSD. So, so that, and then looking, saying, "Okay, so Paul and Prue made sure that they let us know we were Americans over there, and that we're just a little bit below the British in our baking." And so, I really wanted to see this to see just how we stood up to them. And I yeah. think it's going to be time to, uh, for uh, and you guys to push the um, American UK challenge here. <laughs> I think, I think, I, especially with this one, like I said, I, th of course, they have like what a, an additional like uh, what is it, four bakers, five bakers, whatever, however the math maths. But still, I'm, I, I was like, eh, I'm not seeing anything that is so much better than what what, what was done on, on 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 the American version of the show. So I'm like, I don't know, guys. I think a loaf cake is pretty much a loaf cake and. A but they had the same fears we did. You heard the and the elevated lo loaf cake. You've got to decorate, and it's got to cool. But and the loaf cakes have to bake for a long time. So they they played with with all of us with that two hour time limit. Yeah, and and I um I was I was I was kind of like surprised that I don't know that 
don't know how I want to word that. <laughs> I just, I was like, yeah, hey, y'all, y'all just gonna do this again? Uh, and, and and I wonder, like, now I'm like, like, Ooh. so they when they they were doing it, they were in the cold, which is so, like I said, obviously y'all, you guys have the warmer weather. So I feel like they might be filming the American version probably right around now, wrapping up right around now. What's that? You because you went over there, like we were there the month of August, and this this year they were supposed to have done it a little bit earlier, so okay. it still would have been warm. Okay, yeah. And so where they have the opposite, they, they must have started doing this in, in the late spring or something because they were like like actual freezing. But of course, it did nothing for uh, these cakes because anyway, y'all, let's get started. <laughs> it ends up first. She's making a cinnamon roll loaf cake, crunchy cinnamon pecan base with a cinnamon swirl sponge covered in a vanilla glaze in a fluted loaf tin. I like the way that loaf tin looked. And I, of course, was immediately like, ooh. Man, I've seen the uh, you know things go astray with uh, mm-hmm. the, <laughs> the, the how, how worried were you that that wasn't coming out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's <laughs> very. <laughs> it was bad. I'm telling you, I was sitting there like, come on now, uh, Jill. It's all V's fault. Loaf cake. Uh, I believe she said that's dedicated to her sister. Uh, it's uh, her loaf cake is chocolate and orange marble sponge covered in chocolate and orange Swiss meringue buttercream. And candy orange slices. Don't worry, I'll get you a Swiss meringue. I'll talk, tell you all about Swiss meringue buttercream a little further down. Oh, no, it's actually right. Man, my notes is too good. I was like, I'll talk about it later. I think it's further down. But no, it is literally right here. Swiss meringue buttercream. Let's just say this is your first time listening to the show. Trust me, I'm going to talk you through things that I think you probably need to have in your uh, in your toolkit going forward. And you need to know what a Swiss meringue buttercream is. Because the way it has been described to me by the bakers I hang out with, like this guy Brad, is that it's a stable way. It's a more stable uh, uh, icing, frosting, whatever you want to call it, buttercream. And that's why a lot of bakers prefer it or have a good time using it. Uh, but a Swiss meringue buttercream is made from cooked egg whites and sugar. Butter and flavorings like vanilla and f- flavorings like vanilla and salt. Salt as a flavoring, sir. Uh, Taste cook- enhancer. <laughs> Still go with that. Whip the cooked eggs and sugar into stiff peaks. Then slowly add the butter before adding the flavors. Boom. Swiss meringue. Buttercream. Uh, John is making a cherry and chocolate marble loaf. Uh, okay. Cherry and chocolate marble sponge covered in cherry syrup topped with dark chocolate ganache and cherry macarons. Here's another for you. Ganache. Is an emulsion between melted solid chocolate, which is made with cocoa butter, the fat phase, and a water-based ingredient, which can be cream, uh, milk, or a fruit pulp. <clears throat> we get a fruit one later in the episode, in fact. Uh, depending on the ratio of cocoa butter and water in the finished product, ganache can be either semi-solid or liquid at room temperature, which allows its usage in a wide diversity of desserts and confectionery items. Costco puts ganache on one of their cakes, and I'm telling y'all already, Costco makes one of the best uh, b- big, like, almost factory manufactured cakes in the business. It's not a lot of, like, people who could, like, like not, a, not a companies that make a fine cake like that. I'm a real cake snob. I'm a snooty, snooty cake guy. But Costco make an all right cake, y'all. And they got this little cake with the chocolate ganache on it. Yeah, I'm telling you. Get down to get down, y'all. Andy is making my first bake, which is, uh, Inspired by the, the the lemon stuff that he learned how to make with his mom, uh, it's a it's a loaf cake, lemon flavored sponge, wrapped in a white chocolate collar. Then uh, then he uh, just gonna like pipe some uh, some buttercream flowers on top of it. Did that work out? Now that I look back at Andy's, no, I think was, they didn't like it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think well, yeah, I think the color, the it's super colorful. I think it might have just been a little warm, so it might not have looked as good as it could have. I can't recall exactly. Uh, Mike is making lemon and linseed loaf soaked in lemon with lime syrup, lemon zest, and linseed marbled sponge topped with lemon buttercream. Who knows what linseed is? Up until then, I thought it was a furniture polish. We call it flaxseed over here is all. Oh. <laughs> Small seeds that can be eaten whole, ground, or pressed into oil. Native to India and the Eastern Mediterranean, they are small and almond-shaped. Word to linseed. Uh, Georgie, vanilla and chocolate marble loaf cake. It's a chocolate, mar- chocolate marble sponge topped with salted caramel, uh, macarons, and chocolate and vanilla ganache. Uh, Sumaya, uh, halva surprise, halva though pronounced with that V, is spelled with a W, H-A-L, H-A-L-W-A, Halva Surprise Loaf Cake, the car- carrot halva, center surrounded by coconut and toasted milk powder sponge topped with a cream cheese icing. 
if I recall correctly, Brad, you told us that the cream cheese over there is different than the cream cheese we get down with over here. Right. A lot, a lot thinner, more of a, a runnier thing. So our our whipped cream cheese is a, even stiffer and more stable than their cream cheese was. I find it to be fast. So it was like they told us to mix some flour in with it. So like I had a cream cheese swirl in mm -hmm. my elevated loaf pan. And so they said, put a little bit of flour in with that to try to give it some, some substance. Fascinating. Uh, Carrot halva, because we all need to know. <laughs> also known as uh, Gajer Kahalva or Gajarel. Damn, damn, like, I ain't going to be able to pronounce that one. Uh, G-A-J-R-E-L-A -E is a traditional North Indian dessert made by simmering fresh grated carrots with full fat milk, sugar, and ghee with cardamom and chipped nuts. It's a carrot cake vibe, flavor-wise. So basically, she stuck a cake inside of a cake, but not really because it was just the carrot situation. But still, <laughs> I love the idea because I love carrot cake. So, And now I feel like I might need to go find some halva somewhere to see if I get down with that as well. Making it? No, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is making a guiding star loaf cake. Lemon almond sponge with raspberry sponge stars down the center, topped with a Swiss meringue buttercream. I, I was like, that's kind of neat if that works. Mm -hmm. And it you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nelly, coconut loaf cake, coconut sponge with a swirl of pineapple jam and a coconut ganache covered in coconut and white chocolate ganache. Fire. I want to like eat this cake. my worst nightmare. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm not a coconut person. Oh, I love sorry. coconut. I like it, it less than I like carrot cake. <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, yes to all of that. I needed that in my life. For real, for real. Uh, Dylan. Dylan's making sticky mango rice loaf cake. Uh, it's a compote. Uh, it's a mango compote filled uh, filled coconut sponge. He's got to top with some rice puffs. It's a very cool situation. A compote, y'all. Again, it's one of these words that, like I said, we throw around, but I don't know if we all know. So I thought I'd give you a definition of compote. French for stewed fruit is a dessert made of whole or pieces of fruit in sugar syrup. Whole fruits are cooked in water with sugar and spices. The syrup may be seasoned with vanilla, lemon, or orange peel, cinnamon sticks, or power or powder. Oh, cinnamon powder. Okay, there we go. Cloves or other spices, ground almonds, grated coconut, candied fruits, or raisins. The compote is served either warm or cold. Basically, you just tell me it's served. <laughs> Christian, well, for the umami apple loaf cake, it's a cinnamon miso sponge filled with an apple miso fudge topped with miso brandy snaps. Guess what there was too much of in that cake? Miso. Got your guess. There you go. <laughs> He had red miso. He had regular miso. He had miso. I'm like, bro, it's a lot of damn miso. So I know y'all be going to, you know, your little, your favorite little, uh, you know, hibachi spot, and they give you a little cup of a uh, miso soup, and you like, I don't like this, or you love it. <laughs> Vanessa loves it. I, I like it obviously, do not. Vanessa and I love it. <laughs> I swear, y'all, this, this is the same person. <laughs> Wonder <Ridiculous>. Twins. <laughs> But in case you didn't know, miso is a traditional Japanese seasoning. It's thick paste produced by fermenting soybeans with salt and koji, which is a fungus from the asparillus or zay, and sometimes rice, barley, seaweed, or other ingredients. It's used for sauces, spreads, pickling vegetables, fish, meats, mixing with dashi, soup stock, or served as miso soup, a Japanese culinary staple. Brandy snaps, which is also on top of this man's cake, popular snack dessert food in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. Are we not eating brandy snaps everywhere in the world? <laughs> they are commonly made from a mixture of golden syrup, flour, ginger, cream, sugar, butter, and lemon juice. A variation on the recipe includes bicarbonate of soda, eggs, and self-raising flour. Instead, the snaps are cooked on a moderate heat and are baked briefly as a flat disc that's then rolled while still hot and soft. Uh, Hazel is making raspberry surprise loaf cake. Raspberry and chocolate sponge topped with ruby chocolate shards and freeze dried raspberry. I, that one sounded good. I have come to appreciate and I, and also kind of at this point expect people when they're doing they, they when they want to impart a fruit flavor that the freeze dried fruit seems to be the way to go. And when mm -hmm. people don't go for it, the flavor is oftentimes not present, which we'll get to it from another point later. Let's judge this operation, people. Uh, Samaya's up first. Looks good. Good strong bake. However, carries a nice punch. Coconut level in the sponge, perfect. Bake is on point, not over mix. Delicious. One of the most interesting cakes Prue has ever eaten. And I like when you can surprise one Dame Prue because, mm -hmm. again, 
she's been doing this show for a very long while now. I think at this point they might have been on Channel Four longer than they were on the BBC. Oh or, wow! Or nearing that point, and it's just like you can't surprise her that much. And and, and the fact that uh, somebody managed to do so is pretty great to me. Uh, Hayes was up next. Shards are too big. They were so fat. They were huge. They were <laughs> thick. Huge. But yeah. see, you wanted them to be thick in there. Like when we were there, my shards. As we're waiting the four hours for the judging, I'm watching my shards. Oh no! Bend. I'm going. Please judge it. Please judge it. <laughs> <sighs> I wonder if there there has to be a happy middle, right? There, I didn't, we just didn't we didn't get it this time, but maybe next time she will. Yes. Uh, they were like sharks fins. What a great descriptor. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, very pink, strongly raspberry. The cake is soft but a bit dry. It holds in the mouth just a little too long. I can so appreciate the way Paul can uh, exp- express what he's trying to say about something. But yes, we got jokes. Hose about Because my first, my first watch, I was like, just swallow it. And then um, when I watched it the second time, I'm like, oh, I get what he's saying. <laughs> you can't, because it's not moist enough to go down. Right. Choke, <laughs> choke my man out. <laughs> it's like a Popeye's biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> You got to get them when they just come out of the oven. <laughs> I, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that is the secret. If y'all didn't know how to get down with Popeyes, you just got to get it quick. Uh, Mike, looks like a scramble right there on top. This happened because, of course, uh, Mike, he left his cake in the oven. He kept saying, it's just not done. It's not done. It's not done. Which means it came out so late that it didn't get a chance to fully cool down. And, of course, uh, that means the icing melts. And it did look like a scramble. It's like a scramble really egg on top did. of that bad boy. It really did. There's a crack in the loaf as well, which also to me is a sign of overbaking. Uh, but the the lemon loaf is perfect. Shame the buttercream melted. Just comes down to timing, is what Paul told him. Nelly, bro, I said this in my head, and then Paul said it out loud. Straight from the 1970s, it was like something I've seen in like like cookbooks at my mom's house. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is crazy how she decorated that. Mm-hmm. But hey, uh, very soft, basically pudding. Absolutely delicious. Paul could eat the whole thing. It's not pretty, but it's good. <laughs> and I, I disagreed. I thought it was very pretty. I thought it was like neat, well done, kind of nostalgic. I, if somebody put that in front of me, I was like, oh, who made this? This is so lovely. I, I, I just maybe, maybe he has an expectation of a more uh, current style, uh, style. I don't know. It, I like, like I said, yeah. it looks, it looks straight out of my, one of my mom's cookbooks, and I, yeah. it. I think he likes more of a modern bend yeah. to it. Yeah, yeah. And plus elevated, he probably took that to mean like something else. Not something from your mother. Right. Something from the bakery down the street. Right. Then, sir, maybe cake week shouldn't be the first point you, you put these people through fire off. <laughs> <laughs> All these home bakers bringing what they know best, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, Andy, quite like the top. Okay, so they did like the top. Andy's decoration did work out well. For Good stuff. Very lemony. Very heavy. Uh, Jeff, looks like a lava flow. It did. But in a good way. Like, I could see him making a cool Star Wars cake. Uh, in the, in the star in the center is impressive because it needed, it did work out. Very limited. The almond comes through beautifully. Flavor spot on. Looks a mess. Can you imagine? I mean, I mean, also, just in general, how many times I've watched this show and heard somebody say that? Like, this tastes amazing. What was going on otherwise? It's like, please, y'all got to get it together. Come on, Jeff. Turns out Jeff was ill. So, as it turns out, Jeff was playing, playing a flu game. Mm-hmm. So, give it up for Jeff, man. Who knew he could have got better? Uh, Jill, beautiful cake, nice and orangey, just doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, Georgie doesn't look great, but the marbling's lovely. Prue loves the flavor, Paul doesn't, dislikes it, just thinks it could be better. Hold on, let me roll back up. What was Georgie's flavor? Was she aiming vanilla for? chocolate? So it's sort of a simple flavor when when they're looking for these extremes a little bit more and people going on the edge. Yeah, he likes the extremes till he gets to the extremes and he's like, I don't like the extremes so much. <laughs> uh, John, good height. It's a proper loaf. The cherry and the sponge is good. The texture's perfect. The flavor's right on point. There you go. John came through. Dylan, very neat. Good height. Dense flavor wise, it's good, but the bake not so much. Got a little. I think he. I think he. Uh, a lot of people were just. You got to take it out the and and they probably know this because all these all y'all have baked for years at this point. It's like you know it. You just probably maybe and when you, once you start getting on camera, you probably forget. You're gonna get a little residual heat and a little extra baking. Take it out the oven. 
let the let nature take its course. That cake will be but fine. It, but it's also that first bake that you're so so worried about not getting it done and taking it out too early and it not being baked and and it's just a lot of pressure on that first bake. Yeah, yeah. Also, I think it was McKinsey who talked about like how many people are actually in that tent. That yeah. has to be so distracting. I 40, 40 people. And and that was with eight of us. So figure if there are 12 bakers, you've got more cameras, more. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a cameraman on you. You had an interviewer there. You had a sound man. And then you had all the home ec people who, again, I still don't know how they edited it that you didn't see all those people. <laughs> I saw somebody in the judging of the signature challenge. I was like, who is that right there? In, in the judge, like, <laughs> really quick. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that just means they could not get that get that one they could not get that one out the editor like all right yeah. and then, <laughs> this one's gonna hang out there uh christian <laughs> they like the decoration a bit of a drop in the middle but the miso doesn't work for paul or prue though prue is so much sweeter about it than paul ever will be <laughs> like it's, it's it's a it's a look if you, again if you've had miso soup you know Got a little funk to it that does not work for me, might work for you, but I definitely cannot imagine it working well in a bake with that much in it. Because remember, every bit of this cake had miso in it. And it's mm -hmm. like, I don't know, where I feel like you definitely didn't need it in every every step of the way. A miso fudge? No, sir, no. <laughs> And I think we're more tolerant of those flavors and stronger flavors than Paul is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Prue, when she commented on the hava, like Paul didn't really say much, but he's the one to be like, oh, it was exotic and have like an issue with that. Exo exotic is a turn of phrase. I'm like, sir. <laughs> uh, Ilian's up next, or is our, in fact, the last one for this particular round. Exactly like a cinnamon roll, y'all. So I'm over Ooh. here watching. Like I said, I'm watching this on 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 uh, on uh, I'm watching the English feed. I'll just put it to you like that. <laughs> and Vanessa in, the, Vanessa in the other room. I think she's watching uh, Big Brother, which is her 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 current uh, reality show of choice. And when that hand came, when he sat there touching it and chewing it, and and and, and I was like, I knew, Ooh. I knew. I well, no, I got it out the pan smooth. I was like, if it tastes good, she's this is it. And then, like, because nobody had gotten one, and I'm like, he's going to give it to her he, because he didn't say anything. And he put his fork down. I'm like, here he comes, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> and when you just see those wheels turning and you see mm -hmm. him thinking, and, and, he's, and, I, and, I, 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 and actually, like I said, that's the fun part about it. I'm like, He's considering, like, am I going to do this on this first bake of this first episode of this new season? And he did. And that's our first Hollywood handshake of the season. And I love it. And I love getting the again. I was that's when I was fully back. When I when everybody first started, I was kind of like, I don't know if I pray. But then, by the, like I said, literally by the end of those things right here, I was fully back, y'all, on board, ready to go. <laughs> like, yes, I, I scrolling. Some of these notes were written right then and there. I want y'all to know. So it was over for me. I was back in. And I was so excited for it. Delicious, soft, cinnamon levels. Great, gorgeous. Love the color. Just gorgeous. I wanted a piece so bad. <laughs> when Allison took it, I was like, so bad. Like, it's like, if it's a handshake, I'm going to go ahead and get a bite. <laughs> right. <laughs> she took a big bite. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, it's it's true. It's like, if, if it's doing all that, I... I need them. I mean, and they probably do. There's probably like that. The recipe is probably somewhere already. Yeah. Because I know I know they, they keep them. So I, I want to try to maybe find the recipe because I would love to try, try my hand at making that. It'll be in the cookbook after the episodes are done. Mm -hmm. The British ones, they do cookbooks. They haven't nice. done them for ours yet, but. We. I swear. I made it. We got to start talking to people because things have to happen. <laughs> All right, Nick, break it down for them. Mm. I had to take my medicine. Um, good, good, good. Technical challenge. This one's set by Paul. By Paul. It is a taste and bake, which I think is the very first time in the history of the show that they've done a taste and bake. And it is, will be very familiar to Brad, a Battenberg. A freaking Battenberg. Which when we were watching the American show, we were like, what the hell is that? And apparently 
these folks don't really know what it is either. <laughs> they have two hours and 15 minutes. Cool video. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, and I mean with this with this production right here, this this Adobe uh, uh, subscription that I pay so much money for every month pays off <laughs> because all these videos are, of course, just Adobe stock videos that they let me get a hold of. Every single one of them. The first one though, that was an intro video. I had to take a bunch of videos and clip them together, but I, I think I, I think that worked out well for me. Let's get to this technical. It's Battenberg. That's why I got Brad here, y'all. Because we go, I, I, look, I need a, I, we need Battenberg expert help in this situation. I am going to, of course, tell you what a Battenberg is. And then we're going to hand it over to my man Brad, and he's going to tell you what a Battenberg is. <laughs> <laughs> Battenberg or Battenberg. I want you to know, this is also a fun thing. All I had to do was go to my notes from this episode of the American Bank Show, copy, paste. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's either with either cake or square added on the end. It's a light sponge cake with variously colored sections held together with jam and covered in marzipan. The cake, when cut in cross section, displays a distinctive two by two check pattern, alternately colored pink and yellow. The checkered pattern on, on emergency vehicles in the UK are often or officially refer referred to as Battenberg markings because of their resemblance to the cake. I could not believe, but then I was like, Again, this one I really was like, so they really just about to repeat everything they did on the American Bank one? Cool. I kind of like that. I like that it gives that uh, bit of continuity throughout, you Give know? some credibility to us. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, tell us about the Battenberg experience. Your Battenberg experience and what you thought about these guys' Battenberg experience. Okay. Well, first of all, the Battenberg experience, I had baked one Battenberg before I ever went on this show. And it was just one of those times where I'm looking, flipping through some books and I see the Battenberg and it looks, it looks really cool. And I told my wife, I said, I need to make one of these in case I ever have to. And except marzipan paste. I go, so I look up, go to Walmart and get marzipan paste yeah. and roll it out because the Battenberg, you've got your sponge cake, you've got an apricot jam, you've got a buttercream. And then you encase it all in the marzipan paste. Except when we get over there, it's, um, and this was for our bake, it was, it had the, the ingredients and it said, using the food processor, make marzipan, period. Ooh. Ooh. That was the Ooh. instructions. So taste and bake wasn't all that far off for us on that either. Yeah. Um, but you, you need to make your cake and you're making one batter that you're then dividing in half and, and coloring them differently. The really cool part of the Battenberg was we had this like nine by nine pan. And in the UK, they have this really cool parchment paper that has foil on the back of it. It's all one piece. And that's how you divide your pan by you fold the, the foil and the parchment and make your two halves in the pan so then you put your two two flavors and two colors in there, put those in the oven. Now you're making your jam. So again, my first time making apricot jam was here's your apricots and here's your jam sugar and make jam. Um, again, that was it was an amazing experience. But then the buttercream. So you're gonna take then your cake, divide it up because you need eight, eight perfect. I mean, similar slices here. So you need now, um, for eight of them, you're going to need two pieces oh, Brad froze. of your... There he goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're going to put them together with the buttercream. You're going to then I encode it. Oh, no. There's a pan. Seam on the very... I'm trying to, well, no, I, I'm, I'm looking at Brad's internet and it's saying nothing. So oh, no. <laughs> I think, I think Brad's internet abandoned oh, yeah, him. 
like an X. Yeah, oh, there he goes. He look, no, 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 come in, go on, come in, okay. go on. Your internet is playing uh, playing tricksy with you, sir. Oh, you're oh. coming and going. It's like it's trying. Yeah. And get full and then just ask. <laughs> It's so heartbreaking. To me. It's like I get, I get right to the part where I'm like, this is what I want to talk to. And they're like, no, nah, the internet's like, I will not allow it. Maybe we can refresh. Try try to refresh your browser, see if we can get that to, to tweak itself. Let's see if that helps the problem. The problem. Uh, really? All right. And I'll have to let him back in the room when it uh, does that. Brad Gessner joined. Oh. I'm back. There we go. Yeah. Hey. You're, 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 <laughs> go back. Describe, describe making a bat and bird. The, 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 okay. it, it was like, it was not trying to be your friend that time, guys. At all. Yeah. We got, Did like, you get any of it? It, it was got, there, and then we were gone, and there, and gone yeah. again. So, okay. So you've got, you've got 16 pieces, um, actually 32 pieces if you're making eight of them, yeah. two of each color. You're going to put those together with the buttercream. You're going to then have the apricot jam around it. You're going to have that roll. Um, I think I froze up again. No, you're, no, you're good. Are you there? Okay, <laughs> then, you're, then you're going to wrap it in the marzipan, not, not trying to tear the marzipan. You want it thin enough that it'll roll, but not thick enough that it's going to crack. Yeah. And you try to get the edges of, of your marzipan to meet in one of those corners so yeah. they all look nice. You take your sharp knife, and they had amazingly sharp knives in the tent, and cut the edges off so you get those perfect checkerboards on the end. Yeah. So the marzipan is a no bake situation. That's just like a thing that you okay. Right. So, so I you, take you, you take I almond see. paste, um, a little bit of um, powdered sugar, or they use castor sugar for this yeah. for this challenge, and then a little bit of rose water and almond almond um, oil in it hmm. and uh rj was like i've never used granulated or in this case castor sugar for making marzipan when he makes marzipan he said it's it's always a powdered sugar thing powdered that's sugar, what makes yeah. sense to make it and I, I, because it kind of soaks with the oil right whereas the granulated sugar is just never going right. to be that, give you that and, break, if you mix, so. and if you mix it too long the oils in that the natural oils in that almond will come out and you just have goo yeah mm. So I it's 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 a good challenge, and like I said, I'm I'm glad they did it for both of you guys because I would say that is a solid solid challenge right there. It made it made the eight of us feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. oh, I for bet. sure. <laughs> well, like, even as a viewer, we were like, "Who the hell has heard of a Battenberg? Like, how are you supposed to make this?" But <laughs> but they <laughs> taste amazing. Yeah. Everything about it seems right, and I'm not even a huge fan of, of the uh, apricot, but I, I think that combination of flavors together would probably be re uh, very nice. So they work. I think well. it says when I look at it, it looks like fondant, and I'm like, I don't want that, but it's actually oh, marzipan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Taste and bake is an ideal. It's something I think I I was very excited for, and I'm like, I hope they do this for a lot of things going forward. They may not be able yeah. to pull out their hat for uh, you know multiple times in any given series, but hopefully, go that it, it is something they bring back around because I like that ideal. Uh, for those who maybe like said like you guys, and maybe you guys were the were the were the, were the guinea pigs. Like, man, they didn't know what a, a, a Battenberg even looked like. Maybe we need to give people a little bit more on this particular one because Battenbergs may have had a pop, may have had a popularity at one point that no longer is you know like that. So, showing them what it looks like, giving them an idea of what it tastes like, and then them them managing to make some pretty decent facsimiles thereof. I was like, okay, solid guys. So. Good stuff in the realm of Battenbergs. Oh, let's get to it, people. Let's judge this because it's not really much I can tell you. They made their Battenbergs. <laughs> uh, George is up for first. They like the color. Even. Pretty neat. Good zing on the apricot. Not too much almond extract. Decent. Nice blend of flavors. Alien. Not enough yellow. A bit pale. All in all, all in the all, all the yellow, of course, went to the cake is what they discover. Paul describes it as Luminous again. I love Paul. Paul Hollywood's descriptions are great. Okay, flavor tastes nice. Overall, look is the issue. Dylan's up next. Nice shape, strong color, borderline violent is how they describe that color. <laughs> inside, inside looks good. All elements are good. Hazel, a bit untidy. In fact, terrible. The ends of the sponge weren't trimmed. The marzipan's not wrapped well. The flavor was all right. 
Tobias, a bit too small. Size all wrong. Yellow too bright. Marzipan too thick. Needed more almond. Few issues, to say the least. Mike's up next. More green than yellow. The marzipan clearly had been overworked and is tearing. The jam saves it, though. The almond is quite strong. He put, like, it looked like three spoons in there. Oh, the almond, I was like, is that too much? <laughs> but because the because the jam was so good, it I guess it kind of beat back the almond. And so it ended up working out flavor, uh, flavor-wise. Uh, Nelly, the, in this case, the marzipan needed to be worked more to prevent cracking. It's a bit, it was a bit thick, but not too bad. Good flavor. Jill, no color in the Mars band. Them cheese was pale. Just the, just ghostly. I was like, ooh, yeah, that does not like look taste. great. Yeah. Uh, no color in the Mars band, but they are neat. The Mars band is a bit thick. Looks like not enough sponge and too much Mars band. When they show it from the side, from the, 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 the cross section, you're just like, yeah, that's that's more Mars band than anything. And of course, they, they described it as it looked like having a, and, and tasted like uh, having a Mars pan sweet. Uh, Christian looks very nice. Though a bit small, nearly the size of Petty Fours. Not much almond, but they are neat. Andy, messy. The colors are good, but needed more on the marzipan. Good flavor, nice and thin. Very nice. John, a little yellowish, a little yellow, but inside looks neat. The marzipan to sponge ratio was good. Let's rank them now. Uh, in the 11th. Oh, you guys didn't know this because I, I mentioned it, but didn't mention it. Uh, they come back the next day to, 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 to do the technical and, and showstopper, and they tell us that Jeff is uh, uh, doing poorly and therefore will not be joining uh, them in the tent that day. And so we only had 11 bakers uh, during our, dur- during these next two events. Well, Did not dawn on me at that moment that no one was going home. Should have been so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, on the edge of my seat until the end. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 11, coming in 11th, it was Mike. Marzipan was terrible. Ooh, bless me. <laughs> the fact that his was so bad that Hazel's that looked like what it looked like came in a tenth. A bit clumsy, but tasted good. It's actually kind of saying something. Uh, so I, a bit small. Flavor's okay. Eight was Andy. Seven was Ilian. Uh, six was Jill. Five was Nelly. Four was Dylan. John, a little Larry with the color on the Marzipan, but very neat. Christian, tiny bit small, but otherwise perfect. Now this is me. This is my. This is my uh, little judginess here. I think that the fact that he got to see what these things look like and still managed to, I'm going to say, mess that up, means he should have been judged harsher. Like you had a full <laughs> dang Battenberg in your hand. You saw what they looked like in their size and everything, and you still was like, I ain't doing that. And I feel like you should. He should have been judged a little more harshly for that. Not saying you got to came in the last or anything. Just don't think you, don't think you should have came in second. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, that was all. Okay, that's all I wrote down. In first is Georgie, Georgie, a person who just so happened to randomly look up the recipe for a Battenberg the night before the challenge, also wins the challenge. See how we see how having a recipe can help. <laughs> <laughs> Did really well. Good sponge. We, butter. We all did that in the apartments the night before the technicals. We we're all searching through, texting each other. What about this? What about that? Oh, see, that's smart. What do you think? What do you th- and she just happened to hit the, the jackpot on the one she looked at. I like it. And not saying that we'll be this way going forward, but it wouldn't it be great if you if you had watched the American, you'd have a little bit of a little bit of like a huh. If they did the same, if they do the same same thing next go around, that'd be fun. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, uh Good sponge, buttercream, did well on the marzipan. Guess what? Georgia did the dang thing, and we respect her for it. Absolutely love that. Uh, Let's get over to this last one, Nick. It's a showstopper challenge, and it is an illusion cake, which, listener, I happen to have a slight obsession with. Sometimes I get into a loop on TikTok of playing cake or real. (laughs) I'm really good at it, actually. It's about the sound of the object. If they move it into the frame, you can hear the difference. But uh, they have uh, four hours for this challenge. I 
had a lot of fun making that one. And also, it, it took great. me. It, that one took some time. I had that another. One, the opening one, too, and the lady, like, touches it's a little too hot. Like, it's great. It's Thank great. you. <laughs> Yeah, that right there, I was like, I don't know if I, I, I it, it took a couple of tries before I was happy with the other product. And also, the videos are all different sizes. Some of the video came, it's, it's 4K, some of the video is 1080p. And so it, when I go put it in the uh, premiere, it's different size. Y'all, it was a lot. Your boy's out here <laughs> working, working. Yeah. Luckily, his lady went to film school and taught him a lot about using premiere, so I can kind of get around it. Yeah. I couldn't do podcasts without my lady. I want y'all to know that we wouldn't have the podcast that that that, that, that we have to begin with without her. Because I did not know, and I was like, "Oh, talk nice. everything I go." Respect to Miss uh, nice. Vanessa. We had a little uh, guest for a second, Brad. Your your dog. Oh, Tater. Tater. Tater Bell came through. There's Tater. Oh, look. How cute. Look oh at that. Oh, my God. It's so adorable. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, so, on Brad's episode, their their showstopper was uh, like a, a, a fantasy birthday cake. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this, they went for a hyper-realistic illusion cake, but both four hours to do. So again, went back, checked my notes. Luckily, I write notes and I saved them all. So I, uh, I like that's all. Like I said, I, I very much have again now that I now now that we're just deep in the American version as well as the now the British version. I like seeing what carries over. Like uh, in the technical, they had an extra fifteen minutes, of course, to taste and you know kind of develop a recipe and so forth and so on. Then and then the only American Battenberg situation. So I'm like, okay. I dig that. Now, two years ago, the American show had an illusion cake. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so it just it means that it means it's, it's just something they they keep in their pocket. Yeah. Uh, I find illusions to be it's really gonna separate you, 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 oh, yeah, 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 your men from your boys. I guess if you want to word it that way, because it's a tiny bit unfair because it is a baking competition, and yes, you do have to be a good decorator. That's part of what gets you on the show. But the yeah. illusion cake is, is just another level. You've got to be an artist to do a good illusion cake. Yeah. Now, what they didn't say was clear here on ours. If we wanted to use fondant, we had to make it. Oh wow. So, and they didn't say here whether, and they didn't show whether they were making fondant or whether they they had it prepackaged. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, but I mean, if you're looking to do an illusion, you're you're most likely going to have to do fondant or something like that if you want it to be ra- that realistic. So mm-hmm. I'm guessing within the four hours that they probably allowed them to have pre-made fondant. Oh yeah, I would, yeah, I would hope so. Uh, just, and if not, well, well played. <laughs> Let's uh, discuss what these people decided to try and make. Boy, did this one, this one. Ooh, Georgie's up first. She's making Fanny the chicken. The look on Paul's face when she says Fanny. Bruh, right. He said, what? Yes. <laughs> and to naked attraction, I know why. <laughs> <laughs> they show, they show, you know, they do a little bit of video breakdown of Georgie earlier in the episode and they show her running around her yard with her chicken, just having a good time with it. And so I love that she, that she has this chicken that, that is the homie and she's going to make a chicken, I mean, a cake representative of them. Uh, this cake is going to be lemon and elderflower sponge with a lemon curd and elderflower buttercream filled layers covered in 300 fondant feathers. Wow. It's too much. <laughs> I get the, the why. It's too much. Uh, Samaya. Pato, which means uh, which is Spanish for duck. The duck illusion cake is going to be built from orange sponge with airs, layers for me of orange buttercream and balsamic strawberries. The notion of balsamic strawberries made me go, no, thank you. But <laughs> people do have, you know, they enjoy uh, strawberries and salads, and people love mm-hmm. balsamic dressing. It mm-hmm. all makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Just not for me. <laughs> you have you need to know not know it's there, then you'll like mm-hmm. it. That's probably what it ended up being. I gotta just try it, is what it is. I gotta just mm-hmm. not be a big baby, and at least at least that way I can say I tried it. And so it, it, I can never be shot down off of that. Uh, this is gonna be one where you get some 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 uh, extra definitions after I explain you what he's making. Okay, so let's go. <laughs> Dylan's making a canopic jar illusion cake. Uh, if you didn't know, canopic jars are what they put the what they used in ancient uh, Egyptians during the mummification project process 
to store and preserve the viscera, viscera of their owner in the afterlife. Uh, he's going to build it using disc of sesame d'aqua uh, and spice chiffon sponge and layers of tahini, uh, tahini buttering. Tahini is a uh, sesame seed paste. Tahini is Miso's cousin. Yeah. <laughs> if they're much cooler like the cousin. the same process. <laughs> They're much cooler co- cousin because it don't got the extra little fungus situation that Miso has. <laughs> if you want to know the chiffon, chiffon cake is, if you looked it up, you'd be like, that's an angel food cake. But no, it's not. And I'm going to tell you why. It's a hybrid between a sponge and a butter cake. Unlike most sponges, chiffon does not contain both baking powder and oil. However, like a sponge cake, chiffon cakes are built on a foundation of separated whipped egg whites and yolks. Using oil in the batter makes it easier to beat air into the batter and come out with a very fluffy cake in the end. Chiffon cakes uh, give you the best of both worlds, the rich, the richness of a butter cake with the lightness of a sponge. No, when he was stirring that and it was all gelatinous and no, it was a lot. It's a lot to look at. I get it. To look at. Uh, Daqua, it's a lovely little French word, is a dessert made with layers of almond and hazelnut meringue and whipped cream or buttercream on a buttery biscuit base. In this instance, Dylan is using it you know, with sesame as uh, the base of that situation. So that's how you end up building what he built. And I I dig it. Uh, Christian, sweet scenes are made with with this. You know how much I love a good title. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And there you go. That's that there. I was like, there you go. That's that's what I'm talking about. Uh, Mm -hmm. This cake is actually meant to look like a sewing machine. And uh, it's like, uh, what is that color? I know that color. That uh, that, uh, that avocado. that 70s avocado green uh, is, is, is is the color you want to picture this sewing machine made from. So any singer sewing machine, your mom or your grandma or, your, or you might own, imagine that, but in cake. Mm-hmm. I like the idea. Uh, built with orange zest and olive oil and thyme sponge. Get y'all catch that in y'all head, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. With a layer of orange buttercream and orange curd. Like a, er, an herbaceous orange. Not for me. Uh, had I titles, Herbaceous Orange would be it, madam. <laughs> John is up next. The perfect brunch illusion cake. It's a coconut sponge filled with coconut buttercream and tequila syrup. You think, I know you're hearing me say this. This is another reason why you should definitely watch the show. I would think you'd watch the show and not listen to this podcast, but there's people who might just listen to this podcast. The perfect brunch, in your mind, you're thinking, oh, he's going to make a, a mimosa looking glass or something like that there. No. What he's making is a pair of folded jeans because that's what he likes to rock when he goes out. No, no. They say they get, they go out, they have brunch, they drink, they're a little drunk, and they go shopping. That's what my man John came up with to represent. I wouldn't have named it Perfect Brunch. I got to tell you that. I would have come with something else, mm-hmm. but that's me. Jill, crown green bowling illusion cake. I don't know what that kind of bowling is. That's not bocce. That's a different bowling. So what is that? Yard bowling? I don't know what that game was she was playing. And I don't understand it fully. So I'm like, what is going on here? But they showed a video clip of her and her mom playing uh, playing this bowling game. And she made the bowling balls in cake form. I thought it was pretty nifty idea. Uh, she's making a dark chocolate and Irish cream sponge uh, filled with Irish cream caramel or caramel, however you pronounce it, and Irish cream buttercream. It's not, it's not all miso. I want y'all to know that, okay? <laughs> I know you're hearing it like, hey, isn't that what you said Christian did earlier? Different flavor profile, and uh, one works and one doesn't. Uh, Mike, my favorite cake and books illusion cake. Man, we'll get to this one. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it's a chocolate espresso sponge filled with butterscotch. And I, well, yeah, I've had like a chocolate covered Werther's or something like that, right? So chocolate and butterscotch do seem to go together. Mm-hmm. I just, for whatever in my head, it wasn't making sense. I was like, butterscotch, chocolate, but. I guess I think on a little bit. I probably had that before, so that's on me. <laughs> Caramelish, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. Uh, Andy, it uh, is it, it's an overnight job illusion cake. Uh, it's coconut sponge filled with coconut buttercream and raspberry jam and raspberry chantilly cream. Chantilly cream don't need a long explanation for it. It's just whipped cream. The French call it chantilly. It's the same whipped cream you love mm-hmm. over here. They just got a fancier name for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hazel is making a handbag illusion cake. Uh, lemon zest sponge soaked in lemon syrup filled with lemon mascarpone cream. 
skin tone that all holds hands. Seems like it works together greatly. So Meso feels like a full stop, and you probably shouldn't do it. <laughs> uh, Nelly, a retro '90s shoes illusion cake. Uh, I loved her explaining why she wanted to do that, and I'm like, right. I like Nelly a lot. A That's lot. a fun a lady. I really, I really am hope with the hope that she goes far. She's a good time to be had. I think she'll be fun to have on the show. Uh, chocolate sponge filled with raspberry curd and chocolate ganache covered in fondant, and then decorated to, of course, look like a shoe. Uh, Ilian is making a vase illusion cake. As soon as she said, I was like, it's too simple. And I know that's judgy. And I know I couldn't make a vase cake if you asked me to right now. But I'm sorry. It's what the, this is what the business of the show is. I was I looked at I was, the very idea. I was like, it's far too simplistic. But I think that like in the realm of illusion cake, simplicity can lend itself to the the magic of the illusion cake. Fair. Because if it looked like if, if she could pull off a vase... You know what I'm saying? I don't know what else she could have done to I mean, you know, maybe maybe made it look shiny or some such. You are correct. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like everybody else is here cutting and carving and so forth. And this is basically like it's a trapezoid. <laughs> yeah. No, if she pulled it off, it would have been to me the perfect example of an illusion cake. Like yeah. that's the joy of it. You get a knife and go, oh, it's actually it's cake. cake. Yeah. It's cake. Uh, in this case, it's a, ch- a chocolate sponge filled with peanut butter, uh, buttercream, and caramel, and decorated with it with these edible fried rice flowers that are so pretty. Out there. So innovative. Yeah. So, wow. It's like so much fun to be had <laughs> watching it. And as like I said, I just I just knew what it was. I was like, mm, it's gonna be a little too simplistic. And when it comes down to the judging, but I didn't say that, so I said that. <laughs> Y'all, again, you have to watch. This show, you do this one by itself. I don't even you gotta watch nothing else. Fast forward to this part right here when you see yeah. this cake hit the table, and yeah. you'll be fine. Samaya has made her duck, her duck pato. Bruh, as soon as it hits the table, Paul Hollis in there says exceptional. Bruh, the the duck looked like it was going to blink. <laughs> it was that was just amazing. I mean, even even the base of it where she had her wood grain. The wood. Mm. And when she explained how she did it and like, when, 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 while she was baking it, because, you know, they're explaining how she's doing it. I'm like, this is crazy. I would have never thought of this. I love it. I love it. 19-year-old. This is a kid kid. Just yeah. Younger than my oldest child at this point. We've crossed lines here. Right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Uh, <clears throat> Paul says exceptional. He is not wrong. Feels like it could flutter off any minute. Prue, yeah. says one day, Prue Leaf. The detail. The feathers. The beak. Fantastic. The wood base, beautiful. But then, hold on. Wait, there's more. A beautifully baked cake. They love mm-hmm. the flavors. The Swiss meringue butter, the Swiss buttercream is smooth. The straws are delicious. A nice little kick in the flavor with that, with the balsamic. Terrific job. Really wonderful. Mm-hmm. Has she done well in the other, better, I guess, yeah. the other two challenges? Yeah. Easily, easily, Star Baker. Yep. Didn't work out that way, y'all. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Chill, really clever. You can see exactly what they are. Uh, Prue would have liked them to have been more spherical, but we get why they couldn't be. I don't. <laughs> I guess I don't she would have been like they were just slightly oval, just slightly oval. Yeah, a little bit. The extra. towel was incredible. Are you kidding me? Right? Yeah. That was yeah. bonkers. It was okay. So I just told y'all I'd watch for the duck. Keep watching because Jill's is right there afterward. Okay, because nope. you got to see there what are, you're there doing. Are few that I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, really works very, very good. Uh, could have been a boring chocolate cake, but it turns out all the combination of Irish cream and so forth really kicked it up and made for a nice, a lovely, lovely and delicious cake that looked really kick-ass. I just think it did. Uh, Dylan, impressive. It's a clever cake. Uh, it's clever. It looks like, Paul was like, it looks like the, the canoptic jar. Uh, cl- uh, cake works. The spice blend works well. It's unusual, but delicious. Dylan has such an earnest face. Yeah, he looks like he's really just focusing on tasks. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Head down, just, just straight ahead. And uh, the no. build with that chiffon was something, too. Because you yeah. the build was a sturdy cake, mm-hmm. and that's the light and fluffy cake. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, everybody else is basically doing your standard, uh, you know, sponge cake. And then, like, he, he's, I'm telling you right now, it's just this side of angel food. <laughs> like, had, like weight on the top that yeah. Anubis was like hefty. 
Yeah. So the fact he managed to do that, I uh, respect to uh, Nelly. Cake beautifully baked. Good chocolate flavor. But Paul, Paul wonders where the raspberry is. This is where I told y'all. She used the raspberry ganache uh, to, between the layers, and it just soaked into the cake and just wasn't going to be anything. I'm telling and it you. Looked like it, well, yeah. it looked like a cake. <laughs> it looked like a cake. It looked like a cake. If you're going to try to impart fruit flavors, it just seems to be the, uh, the freeze dried is the way to go. It just always will give you the punch that you need. And uh, I wonder why. It's just because it's just, you know, it, it sucks all the water out, you know? Just mm. so it, it concentrated just, the flavor. Yeah, yeah, oh, you, okay. yeah. If you have not found it yet, and just I know you don't eat too much candy, but if you come around and you find the freeze dried candy they'll, they'll sell somewhere, buy you a little bag. Enjoy. Oh, Change wait. I had a thing about Dylan. Paul said this, you have a, a very Muslim flavor. Paul, Hollywood, what's a Muslim flavor, sir? <laughs> I thought he said Middle East. But he, he, said, yeah. he said them both. He first he said it's a Muslim flavor, very Middle East flavor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what flavor is Muslim, Paul? <laughs> Just a note. Oh, my gosh. Well, that'll come back around. Because trust me, you know how these people, how the people are when they review this show. They be like, people hate "This the man who so said tacos, and I'll never allow him to get away with it." They do so much, so much. <laughs> real for real. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, and I actually wrote that down. Freeze dried fruit would have would in the would have would have uh, in the curd would have punched the flavor right up. So there you go. Uh, Christian, wonderful. Can certainly taste the time. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> The cake also looked like a cake. Yes. Uh, the cake, on the other hand, is firm, so not the best to eat. And Paul goes, I'm going to be a little more real with you. It's massively overbaked. Bone dry, in fact. And I don't like the flavor. It's sour, a bit like that miso. <laughs> is Paul Hollywood super intimidating in person? He's because he seems so nice on TV, even when he's being harsh. But I imagine being in front of him is a different. Okay, the, the the image I will never leave, I have leave my head is Paul with that brutal knife when he goes chop, uh -huh. and I mean and it would hit down, and he would do that on all of them. But I mean, he would just sit there, and you'd say something, and he'd just stare at you. It's at that thing that i mean as an attorney for years i was taught like on cross-examination you just look at a witness after they answer the question mm. and because everyone gets so uncomfortable looking they start just start talking more mm -hmm. and paul has the ability to do that he could be a great judge uh, <laughs> yeah. in a court it's just that look amazing i love it absolutely love it uh the design was exceptional it's a shame about the flavor Sheesh. It was a great cake. It just was obviously a cake. Like you yeah. knew it was a cake. Yeah. Uh, so for John, this is me. This is me. My one, my words. I simply did not appreciate the look of it from the, the top camera angle. Yeah, these are the, the jeans. jeans. The jeans had details that were incredible, but overall, it looked like a cake. Yeah. Right. He had that little. Um, tool that he used that had like the little wheel on it that poked the holes where the thread would be. That was awesome. And then he had the variegated shades of blue. But mm -hmm. I thought I thought it was fairly simple compared to yes. I mean when when you compare that to the duck, yes. I don't think there there's any comparison. Agreed. It's, it's like they're playing in two different they're playing two different sports. <laughs> it's no disrespect to the game. Again, I can't do it. So I'm always going to respect it to that degree. But I was just like hmm, I don't know. Uh, it looks like a boot, and this this is again, this is me. It looked like a boot from the, the, the top shot. It just looked like, like, mm -hmm. imagine if you will, a boot, uh, like from Mario Brothers. That, that particular like if boot. he had done the work that he did on the patch and the stitching on the rest of the jeans, we will be having a different conversation, yeah. But time, get them four hours, and I just don't, hey, it's a lot, it's a lot to do in that in a short mm -hmm. amount of time. Prue thinks it's really amusing, and some of the deeds, some of the detail is beautiful, but could have done more work on the fold, mm -hmm. cuts well. It's a lovely sponge, lovely, really nice, really well executed cake. So can't be wrong. You know what I'm saying? It, it came through for the judges. Yeah. Uh, Ilium, flowers are lovely. The vase itself, not so much. As you can see the joins. So like literally, if you look at the, if you, it needs to look like a vase, which probably means it needs to have a little bit of a hollow in it. And, you know, to look like where you put the flowers at. Instead, it's just like fake flowers sticking into a cake. And then you can see where the folds of the of the of the fondant are were at the top. It's just like from far away, it was great. 
And then when they zoomed in on it, when Paul was talking about the mishaps, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. It, did, but, it did look from a distance that stamp design she had on it mm -hmm. looked like something, a ceramic mm -hmm. face someone would make. And exactly. Oh, I, but it, but again, that that cor rough corner there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's 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 all, and especially in this in this particular situation, it's going to be those rough edges that are going to like get you caught every time. Mm -hmm. And they did, but the cake is well baked. The flavors are amazing. It's just a slightly flawed design. I wouldn't doubt, like you know, how people they can't help themselves. They're like they'll, they'll come back and have to bake something again. I'm like, I'm gonna make myself, I'm gonna make up for where I messed up at. It's like, don't do that. Do something else. But <laughs> I, I would not doubt if she if if given the opportunity, she'd come back and try to. Do better by that cake. Mm -hmm. uh, Hazel. Oh, Hazel. Hazel. Look, the fact she walked up there holding that baby right by the handle, everybody applauded. Because it's cool. deserved. That is very cool. Because that means it, it, it was able to, to do that and hold up under its own weight. And I, and I very much enjoyed that. Hazel like, explaining how many fancy bags she owned also. Right. Yeah. Did you, did you see the mechanism she had when she was building it? Yes. It was a base with the arms coming up for that yeah. handle. Mm -hmm. So it's like. And same note about the jeans with Hazel's purse. There were some details of it that were very realistic and quite lovely. But on the whole, it was a cake. Yeah. 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 Uh, Look, had I like had I wanted a cake like I like wanted a, a purse cake at, for like a party or something like that, perfect. Yeah, but not for not for this level of, of, of not for an illusion you know, cake. No. Yeah, for sure. Andy, bruh, bruh. And, bruh. <laughs> bruh. And, so, and so of course this is of course where so at least on your version of it, are they showing these in the order they that, that they brought them out? Is that in the exact order? Is there a, some editing? Like, did you no, go there's out there's editing? There's okay, editing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering if they actually went out bag for bag like this because the disrespect. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> to have the editor Ooh. to be like, here's a bag. Now here's a bag. Right. It's like, sir, y'all know what y'all do. <laughs> right. I'm glad they didn't put that chicken after that duck. <laughs> <laughs> this was crazy. Crazy. Andy, the mechanic makes this gorgeous leather bag that looks like a leather bag. Uh, just with <laughs> just like a worked leather bag too, y'all. Like not, not just like a shiny, spiffy leather bag, but no, a bag that's had some time and been used and, you know, had tools and has been tossed around a bunch and so forth. But it looked exactly like it. The zipper looked like a zipper. Fantastic work. Like my man can pull that off. Psh. Maybe mechanic, hey, hey, mechanic can get the bills paid, but art, art, maybe something you should be considering, bro. Because that I'm very gorgeous. excited to see what he does for the rest of the season. Like Prue, even Prue was like, I feel like you could just unzip it. Like, oh, uh, exceptional, proper look of the leather, looks so real, over baked, <laughs> but because the filling is so good, and you get so much of it, basically it takes care of itself. Uh, an absolute triumph. Mm. When Prue Leaf calls your cake a triumph, bruh, take a bow. <laughs> take a bow. You earned it. Because that is so good. So good. He, was a, he was, he's a yapper. I love a yapper. Yes. Uh, yeah. And he <laughs> couldn't hear his timer going off and left his bacon. <laughs> <into the home>. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you've got so much going on. Oh, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. Of course. Sure. Oh, yeah. Your, your frosting's mis mixing. You've got your fondant there. You've got your filling boiling over, all these different things. And you only have, even that looks like a big counter, it, it ends up with everything going at the same time, a small space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got to keep that timer. I don't know. He got to buckle it to a shirt or something, especially if he's going to be, if he, if like, look, if you, if you, if you seem to think going forward, you might get caught by that timer. Keep it close to you then. So and he's probably just not used to the sound of it at this point. Exactly. He's like thinking it's tonight is going on. <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> oh, what a fun guy. You like that. Love that. Yeah. Movie, bro. It's our chicken is up next, bruh. I was Fan, poor Fanny. Ooh, <laughs> poor yeah. Fanny. Uh, Georgie. It's slightly odd shape. <laughs> the feather detail really pays off. Y'all. <laughs> How does Fanny taste? Allison is the wrecked. Everybody there. Paul had to turn his head. <laughs> 
couldn't know, just hold this face just, down, just looking down. Kind, like, uh, Allison is like, she knew what she did. And of course, Dame Prue, the adult in the room, just rolls right past it. Like, I'm not going to let y'all do this. Yeah, we can't derail the show like this. Because <laughs> you can't elaborate on it. Like, I understand it's Channel 4. They showed full frontal nudity on Naked Attraction, but this not here. This is not the place to be talking about fannies. <laughs> Correct, correct. Prue, of course, the mature one who just keeps it moving. Absolutely lovely. Paul prefers the middle layer, thinks the other ones are too dense. Turns out the middle layer was where she was like, I don't like the way these baked up. What was going on with that? The butter situation? Well, she explained it. I just... She had to redo her cake like three times. And I think it was, I don't even remember what the particular holdup was, but she, it was, she just couldn't get the mix right. Yeah. And and uh, something about the, the temperature of the room, the butter, some situation like that. Uh, and they were uh, freezing. Like in the signature challenge, every woman had a coat on. Like yeah. it was cold. Yeah. So that 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 middle sponge, of course, was the the the, the best of the bunch. And of course, it tastes the best on the, on the outside ones. A little a little drier, a little more dense. Uh, but they all they like the flavor. <laughs> Not quite the right shape, but otherwise great. So there you go. And it wasn't terrible. Like it could have been. I think, like, if had she had the time to decorate it fully, it would have been an amazingly realistic looking chicken. For sure. I love that they began and end with bangers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because Mike came through y'all, and he and he was he had he had uh, he had wanted to make five books, but was like, mm, time ain't on my side. Let's just let's do four, maybe three. But he went with the four. He got the four done. These perfect. Leather bound books, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. My man said, "Pick one up. You can pick that, it up." That's that's how you know. That's how you know. That's that's oh. when you know you know what you've done. You've shown yeah. out, and you recognize it, and you're like, "Go ahead, you can pick one up." And they do, and they're like, "These are individual books, all of them wrapped individually in their own layers of fondant, dressed to look." Even right. even the pages, the lines for the pages yeah. there, yeah, just amazing, and. I, don't know, I, I was really tough, like I said, just uh, that duck in them books, just perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, looks so like looks so like leather, neat, rectangular, beautiful. Paul X, did you add coffee to that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Listen, man, that's to, that's to enhance the chocolate. Yeah, yeah, you know, I add a little espresso, mm-hmm. and then Paul's just so excited because he's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we own, man. He goes, that's that. He t- it, he says. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Fire. <laughs> the butterscotch works beautifully well. A beautiful cake, a fantastic ideal, executed very well. This man just came in last place in the technical. Hmm. Let's go. Let's just scroll the notes. Let's take a look at his uh, how he did in the uh, signature. If y'all recall his signature offhand, signature. He's middle, right? Uh, lemon linseed, he did that one. And what did they say about Mike? Uh, oh, signature. Oh, looks like a scramble on top. That's what his, yeah. his, his, his icing melted. So that's but where other that's than where that, they liked it. Yeah, yeah. So he went from messy to really neat. Yeah. And how do you do in technical? Which, you know, I last, last technical, last. awful. He did so bad in technical. <laughs> you, you feel really bad when you do last in technical. <laughs> 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 I, it's like we laugh because Tetco counts until it don't. Until it doesn't. And and it's like we were so mad, Brad, when you were gone. Like there was no consult. I wasn't thrilled about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had so much left to do. Yeah. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. But that, y'all, was your uh showstopper. And Nick Chu, were you show stopped? I was, I was. I was supposed I really to ask was. that beforehand. My apologies. Okay. I really was. Yeah, they they came through on fire this week. I was so impressed. Uh, again, like I said, by the end of signature, I was fully back, y'all. It was, it was. I'm thinking I'm back, John Wick style, y'all. It was so good. Your star baker this week kind of took me more. Took me. I was taken aback by this one, John. I was like, hmm, okay, I, I can was see surprised. why. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, I really thought uh, uh, Samaya would have would have would have got that, but as well. Because like I say, I think she had a, a a a fine, a fine signature, an amazing showstopper, and was in uh, in the middle of the table and uh, 
for a uh, technical. So yeah, but John's it. John's cake must have tasted so yeah. good. Yeah, is mm-hmm. the only thing I can figure there. Which is crazy to me in an illusion challenge. For sure, that they wouldn't go with a better design. And uh, as Nick said, nobody went home because they never, you know, since my own when 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 this situation, which is great because that means we get another week with another baker that might have had to go home this week. Yeah. I don't want, but also I love a double elimination. Y'all know that. I do too. I don't want it in the second week of the show. Yeah, no. They said I, maybe, so I know. maybe they'll only do one next week and two a week after. For sure, my, for sure. But my my, my my hope is that they don't double up uh, this week. I'll let you know. I won't let you know because we'll talk about next week. But I'll yeah. definitely be watching this episode shortly after we get done here because <laughs> it already came out in England. I got chats popping and didn't know it. My apologies, Phase 4. I can't believe Mark inclusion of these in the last episode. These nuts. Okay, thanks, Phase 4. <laughs> right on guy <laughs> okay oh, that's the fun of doing it live people we have, we have, we'll have goofs at some point I might have to throw a moderator in there sorry it just is what it is but I got a whole Vanessa for those kind of things so it's okay <laughs> that was our first week of series 15 of the great British Bake Off B- baking show uh, they didn't even attempt to try to do any uh, correction on, on at the beginning. They said show clear as day, even though you heard and you and, and you heard them change the uh, ch- changed it to show in America. And I'm like, ooh, that recording sounded awful. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, yeah, I kind of rushed that when this go around. Maybe uh, yeah. maybe maybe take a second take at that. Another another hit at that. Trust me, it's a guy who works in sound multiple times in every given week, but. It's the baking show in America. You blame Pillsbury and you get over it. Haters. They need Haters. To That's literally that. quite literally. I've that never, day. I've literally never heard of the Pillsbury Bake Off. They do they do it every year. Apparently. Like, <laughs> like, like they're they're probably it's like it's like the it's like the, the county fair of the nation. It's a I big believe deal. it is a thing. It's just like I've never <laughs> Saw it on TV, radio, and it's a big ever. prize, like fifty hundred thousand dollar prize. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. You get a lot of you, you. You can really make some things happen. You win the Bake Off in America, so I, I feel like they that. should just like combine, do a right. sponsorship cross whatever promotion. Yeah, but I don't. Th- I, don't I don't think uh, Pillsbury exists as a brand in England. I so, see. Yeah, it, 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 it would it would work for us. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. Brought to you by. And and, and and in in any normal situation, this wouldn't be on. It would be broadcast on a commercial on commercial TV. It would be brought to you by Pillsbury easily, but right. because it's on Netflix, that's just not how it plays out over here. Uh, what you two would you think should be the question of the week? What are we asking our uh, our listeners what they think about? Worry not if you don't come with anything. We'll make it happen. <laughs> uh, do you think? Do they agree with the Star Baker this week? Oh, that's yeah, that's easy. Uh, or should that be the poll? Yes, or the no. taste and bake. Oh, yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, what do you think of the taste and bake? What mm-hmm. do you think? And how panicked would you be with the taste yeah, and bake? Seriously. Sure, for sure. Seriously. I mean, I don't bake, so I think I would have just walked out the tent. Like, <laughs> body. And poll, poll, your poll, poll will be a star baker in this, for, the, for this week. Uh, but, 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 but you know what it is? Reach out to us if you're so inclined. Uh, we have an email, podcast at stayscrunchyandmilk.com or uh, give us a phone call at 216-264-6311. We'd certainly love to hear from you and hear from you we have. Because you know Yay. what it is. You know. Click on this right quick. Okay, sorry, I, in my, I should have had the email open. It's, of course, the big homie Frank. Welcome Yay. back. Glad to, glad to have you, uh, listener, as always. Hello, all. Look forward to your coverage of the new season. Already caught episode one. Must say this is a pretty good, good and endearing group. I was impressed with the presentation skills of most of them during the third round. I'll be surprised if you if you are not show stopped. And indeed, Nick, you will show stop. Mm-hmm. By the way, can't believe Prue had a sewing machine in that ugly shade of green. <laughs> Uh, again, that uh, that avocado green is a very seventies kind of vibe. I can I definitely think that really may have been the only choice back then, for yeah. sure. <laughs> Our whole oh. kitchen was that. <laughs> uh, oh, well. 
Uh, oh, well, it was part of the mid-century style. All my best, Frank Wee. Frank, thank you so very much, good sir. I, I can't wait to. I hope you I hope you enjoyed this episode. Can't wait to hear from you again uh, in the, in the near future. Uh, just good to have a guy like Frank uh, showing us love. Y'all know what it is. So, uh, but that is this week's episode. Uh, we'll be back uh, next week. Nick has a couple episodes off this season. A couple or just one off this season. So probably uh, just wait. Am I going to be gone? Yeah, because I know you. I know you. I know you. You, you have travel in one situation. Now. Yeah, I'm just traveling um, the one week, okay, so I think it's good. just going to be the one week that I'm gone. All right, so we should be. But it may end up being two if I can't watch the next, you know, because of I'm gone on a Friday and coming back middle of the week. Again, so I'm preparing you for the possibility. Yes, yes. one of these episodes might just be me and somebody else and so forth. Okay, yeah. got Brad here. But Brad has a life, and I can't always depend on Brad to come through. So, <laughs> Brad, share with the listeners, if you are so inclined, where they can follow you and hang out with you and watch with your bacon. Well, if you go to Instagram, it's easy. It's at Brad Gessner, B R A D G E S S N E R, and um, get to see the whatever my inspiration is of the week. Um, I'm going. Um, not this weekend, but the following weekend up to Toledo. I've been invited up. They have a cookie festival up there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my baking experience in the tent. And we're going to see the um, Toledo's trying to build up the um, Youngstown Pittsburgh cookie table tradition um, up there. And um, it it's going to be a great thing. I was in um, Pittsburgh a few weeks ago. They had the Christmas um, cookie table event there where there were about 1,800 people at it. They wow. had two sessions of 900 each. They came in. Everyone got to pick a dozen cookies. And I won that, I'm still not trying to pronounce it, Anchor Shram Mixer, this Swedish mixer that um, doesn't fly up in your face. Um, I've been practicing with it, and I got my KitchenAid back out the other day, and I had cake all over the kitchen. <laughs> the anchor, the anchor shram is a better uh, uh, mixer blender situation. That's what's up. Uh, it's fun to uh, well look. Brad's the homie at this point now. So I'm saying so he's a fun follow, of course. But it's like Brad be out there baking on the reg, y'all, and it, at events in, in in Northeast Ohio that you can kind of you know. Well, I guess we're we're leaning more west <laughs> or more east toward Pennsylvania almost in some of these situations. But baking out there and he's at but events. I'm a Browns fan. There you go. Well. Oof. <laughs> How can we be? But we are. <laughs> always next <laughs> year. It's always next year. But some events, Brad is, is baking it. You can go buy some of his bakes. At Youngstown Flea this Saturday. See, I'm uh, telling you right now, this episode will be out by then. And, of course, if you're watching it live or watch this video of it already, go check out Youngstown Flea. Get you some uh, some, some Gessner baked goods. It's all. That's a, it's Baker a Brad. There you go. Uh, our our missing man is uh, the two one six is on uh, Tatum two one six. Uh, give him a, a, con- a hearty congratulations on the birth of his his, his third child, the final child of his, as I've been told by by him, <laughs> him and the madam and the lady. So uh, there you go, and uh, he keeps putting up pictures of him. So if you follow uh, 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 Aunt on uh, Insta, you can see pictures of the of the, of the, of the newborn, and uh, that's Nick Jew. Hi, she yeah. hosts What's the Tea? Uh, three three weeks straight. Give it up. Yeah, probably uh, not for a while now, but uh, we, we did get them three in. <laughs> came, came, came back off the summer I hate is hard, doing, doing work, okay? Came through yeah. three episodes, and, they, and yeah. they were all three very delightful episodes. So Thank I'm, you. I'm, get down to get down there. I am the internet. It's Tayro 713. Uh, let's see. I host a show called Stage Crunchy and Milk. Uh, it has been a challenge to do when 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 my two co-hosts have been out and about and moving. This week, your uh, your co-host will be Chalfie of Cadillac on Mars. Also do that show, Cadillac on Mars. We'll be recording that fresh episode next Monday. We will get back to, if you are wondering, hey, man, what happens to that dang ba- uh, of the bear show? It's a lot. Chalfie is a principal and has his own family and stuff. I got a kid that's in their senior year of high school. It's a lot going on. It's a lot to do an additional show. <laughs> Worry not. We'll get back to it. The show actually has done very decent numbers. It's hilarious to me that the people great. that people enjoy our The Bear Recap Show, but they do. So, okay. I think I've caught you up on everything. Bank with us again until next time. Peace. What happened to your ass? It used to be beautiful.